Hi, I'm Marin from Vermont, and my parents are a couple of lunatics who hid a secret from me that rocked my world. But before I continue, please like and subscribe. I guess you can say I'm the grumpy oddball of the family. My dad's a psychologist, and my mom's a life coach, and they have permanent smiles plastered on their faces. Before I was born, they made millions and became famous selling books that taught people how to be happy. When I was a kid, they insisted on driving me to school, where they'd always make a big scene. Give daddy a hug, sweetie. Give mommy a kiss. And don't forget Mr. Stuffy and your magic hat. It was nice when I was five, but now I'm 16 and they're still doing it. Every day they'd find new ways to embarrass me. They'd burst into song in the middle of the grocery store. They'd insist we dress like triplets every time we went out. And they'd show up at school in cheerleading outfits before every big test. You can do it, honey. Yes, you can. Go Marin! My parents and I couldn't be more opposite. I failed to inherit their cheery disposition or their good looks. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that my parents are gorgeous. People are always staring at them and stopping them in the street to pay them compliments. But no one ever noticed me. My parents tried to share their spotlight with me by dragging me to their photo shoots and TV interviews, but it always ended up a disaster. I was not photogenic. Then one time, they decided to do a photo shoot in Disneyland, and the place was just getting on my nerves. All the workers there in the Disney characters kept waving and smiling like they were infected with happiness, just like my parents. And then a woman dressed as Cinderella's fairy godmother came to me with a big smile. So, sweetie, how do you like being at the happiest place on earth? bippity boppity boo And something inside me just snapped. What is wrong with you? You're a middle-aged woman whose job it is to dress up as a fictional character in a dumb costume, and you're smiling like a psycho. What are you so happy about? Then I grabbed her wand, snapped it in half and threw it in her face. Okay, I know that wasn't my best moment. I apologized to her a lot and gave her a really big tip, but someone had made a video of me and it was making the social media rounds. For the first time, my parents didn't look too happy with me. I thought they'd ground me, which was totally understandable, but after a day of silent treatment, they burst into my room, hugged me, and took me out for ice cream. I learned to accept that my parents were just not normal and we were poles apart. But then one day, I came home from school and they told me something that changed my life. Honey, we think it's time you knew the truth. You're adopted. Dad's words echoed in my ears. I couldn't believe it. My mind raced and so did my emotions. First, I was in denial. No way. I got so mad I threw a chair. Then, I tried to convince my parents to come to their senses. Ha <laughs> ha, funny joke. Now take it back. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Suddenly, I started crying like a baby. <laughs> it took a while for my parents to calm me down, but I was fine finally able to hear them out. They told me they'd adopted me when I was two years old. And the craziest thing was that I had a sister. Why tell me now? We received a letter from your sister. She saw us on TV. Up until now, we didn't know she existed. She's been in foster care her whole life, but she showed her records and she's been adopted from the same orphanage we got you from. The more I thought about being adopted, the more it made sense. This is why I didn't have my parents' genes. They weren't my parents. Your sister wants to meet you. She'd like to visit, but the choice is yours if you want to see her. My parents gave me my sister's contact information, and I looked her up online. Her name was Francesca, and she was two years older than me, and she looked a lot like me, but somehow ten times better. She was head of her cheerleading team, voted most likely to succeed, and wore the most stylish clothes. I sent her a DM on Insta, and she responded a half a second later. Surprisingly, we had a lot in common. We both loved Ron rom-coms and mint chocolate chip ice cream, and we both hated zombies. Maybe having a sister wouldn't be so bad. Francesca and I made plans to see each other the next weekend. The next morning at school, I told my BFF Ray the news. I showed Ray a picture of Francesca, and he couldn't stop staring. So I slapped his forehead. Ow! Earth to Ray. Sorry, it's just I can't believe you have a sister. You mean a pretty sister, right? I guess she got the pretty gene from our birth parents. You're just as pretty as she is. In fact, you look ten times better. Yeah, right. No, it's true. You're a goddess and I love you.
you. What? I said I love plastic spoons. Uh, hey, look, that lunch lady has a bunch. I should go talk to her. Bye. Ray was a little strange, but that's what I liked about him. We met in fifth grade. Ray brought a snake into the classroom for show and tell. It got loose and everyone freaked out, but I grabbed the snake by its tail and tossed it into its cage. Whoa, you're incredible. We've been besties ever since. My parents were excited about Francesca's visit, but they were busy the day she was arriving, so Ray and I volunteered to pick her up from the airport. The moment Francesca stepped off the plane, I had a feeling I was in for trouble. She was beautiful in her pictures, but in person, she looked like a movie star. A bunch of boys jumped over themselves <laughs> to carry her bags. It's so nice to meet you, Marin. I can't believe how friendly everyone is. Then this old lady bumped into me and started yelling, Move, girl! Oh. Sorry, ma'am. We didn't mean to stand in your way. The mean lady looked at Francesca and instantly smiled. Aren't you a sweetheart? You, on the other hand, and could learn some manners and comb your hair. You look like a peacock. What the heck? And to make matters worse, Francesca kept fawning all over Ray on the way back home. OMG, Ray, your muscles are huge. Do you work out? Uh, uh, a little. Ray was practically a toothpick. What was she talking about? I don't know why, but when Ray smiled at Francesca, it made my blood boil. When we got back to my house, I barely had a chance to introduce Francesca to my parents before she ran up and hugged them. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Dad, is it okay if I call you that? How about no? Don't be rude, Marin. She's our guest. That whole night, my parents and Ray couldn't get enough of Francesca. Francesca had apparently read all my parents' books and could even quote them by heart. She laughed at Dad's stupid jokes, sang show tunes with Mom, and geeked out when Ray showed her his comic book collection. She even volunteered to cook and made the most amazing five-course meal. You are just wonderful. Extraordinary. Unbelievable. I'm not saying I was jealous, but come on! Francesca made herself right at home. My parents gave her a room down the hall from me, and that night, I felt so relieved that the day was over. But just as I turned out the lights to sleep, I saw Francesca in my doorway staring at me with a creepy smile. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I just wanted to say goodnight. Okay, thanks. Well, good night, and don't let the bed bugs bite. It can get pretty bad if they do. You could get an infection or have an allergic reaction. Action. I've even heard that a bug bite can drive you insane. Oh my god, is that a bug on your pillow? Huh? I was so scared, I hopped out of bed. Uh, Francesca turned on the light and glided over like she was Wonder Woman. Oh, my bad. False alarm. It's just a piece of lint. Sweet dreams. Francesca skipped out of my room with that stupid smile on her face. Thanks to her, I didn't sleep at all that night because I kept dreaming of creepy bed bugs. 48 hours later, I was so relieved because Francesca's visit was almost over. But when I came downstairs for breakfast, I found my parents and Francesca giggling with excitement. Guess what, sweetie? Francesca's decided to stay for another week. Oh, God. I couldn't take much more of Francesca. She was ruining my life. I swear my parents liked her more than me, and so did Ray. That's not a good idea. Don't you need to go back home? You have school tomorrow. You'll miss all your classes. You could fail a test. You could flunk school. The decision could destroy your life. Don't worry, Marin. I'm actually going to stay so I can check out your high school tomorrow. Francesca and my parents were so excited about the possibility of us going to the same school. I tried to keep my frustration to myself, so I avoided them the best I could. I made up some excuse that I wasn't feeling well. I locked myself in my room and watched MSA videos to cheer myself up. The next day at school was as bad as I'd imagined. The moment everyone saw Francesca, they fell head over heels in love. Even the popular kids ran up to me asking me about her. Hey, Mavis, does your sister have a boyfriend? My name is Marin, and I don't know. Can you give Francesca this invitation to my party? What about me? Sorry, cool kids only. Francesca may have been perfect, but there was one thing about her that was a little weird. Every time anyone asked her about her foster parents, she'd tell a different story. Once, my parents asked to speak with them. Oh, they can't be reached. They're marine biologists, and they're in the middle of the ocean studying whales. <gasps> a few hours later, I overheard her talking to the principal. My foster parents can't answer any calls. They work for the government government, and they're on an undercover mission. It's a matter of national security. She even told the popular kids that her foster parents were in a heavy metal band on tour in Thailand. I don't trust Francesca. She's a liar, and I think she's up to something. Not Francesca. She's the nicest, sweetest, and kindest person I've ever met. That's what she wants you to believe. She's got everyone under her spell. You have to help me expose her. Well, of course I'll help you. I adore you, and I would do anything for you. What? I said I love helping my friends. We should spy on her like in those spy movies. She's smart.
smart. What if she catches us? Believe me, she won't. Ray and I bought a bunch of spy equipment online, like binoculars, hidden cameras, listening devices, and these cool camouflage outfits so we could sneak around without being noticed. We spied on Francesca at school when she went out for a run and when she got groceries, but she didn't do anything weird. Till one day, we were spying on her while she was cooking, and we heard her on the phone speaking in a strange coded language. I ate and hot cake. What? Oh, oh, I know. Uh, that's pig Latin. You keep adding A to the end of each word or something like that. My parents have been talking like that since I was a kid. Okay, so what is she saying? I don't know. I've never been able to crack the code and figure out their secrets. Oh my god, do you think they're hiding something really big from me and- Focus on my problems, Ray. Yours can wait. Then one day, I caught Francesca sneaking out of school. I followed her to the park across town, where she met this shady couple. I hid in the bushes and used my spy equipment to listen to their conversation. What's the hold of Francesca? I've changed my mind. You can't back out now. We had a deal. You break into their safe, steal their money, and then you're free. You'll get your share, and then you can go to that fancy college you're always yapping about. I said no. I won't do it. The mean woman grabbed Francesca's arm. You don't have a choice. We could always tell them about your past. You think those rich people will love you after they find out you're a thief? Suddenly, my allergies started to kick in, and I sneezed really what? loud. Francesca and the shady couple looked in my direction. I panicked. Then I saw a bird on a tree, which gave me an idea. Okay, my bird impression was a little lame, but I had to do something. What the heck was that? Sounded like a bird dying, but forget about that. You're out of time, Francine. We'll make our move tonight. The shady couple got into the car and drove away. Once they were out of sight, I jumped out of the bushes and confronted Francesca. No, Francine. Jeez, this is getting confusing. I'm just gonna call her Francesca, okay? Like I said, I jumped out of the bushes. I knew you were up to no good, you thief. I heard everything. You're going down. Suddenly, Francesca burst into tears and... And man, did she look ugly. Her eyes got puffy, snot ran down her nose, and her face looked like a newborn's wrinkly butt. I'd never seen anyone look like a hideous troll when they cried. Can you please give me one chance to explain? Yes, yes, anything that stops you from crying. Francesca told me all about her awful childhood with her conning foster parents, who always made her part of their schemes. I've been waiting to turn 18 to get away from them. Then one day, they showed me you and your parents on TV, and told me you were my biological sister. They said if I stole money from you, they'd give me my share and I could go to my dream college. I just wanted out really badly, so I agreed. But soon after I met you and your family, I knew that I couldn't go through with the plan. You're my sister, my only friend in the world, and I love you. Francesca hugged me tight and cried some more. I hadn't thought of her as a friend before, and she was getting snot all over my shirt, but it was okay. I started to realize how silly I was for being jealous of her. I was the lucky one. Even though my parents were annoying, there was no doubt that they loved me. That night, Francesca and I told my parents everything. They told the police, and Francesca's foster parents were arrested the next day. I asked my parents if Francesca could live with us, and they said yes. After that, Francesca moved in for good, and we became a happy family. One day, I was hanging out at the pool with Francesca and Ray. Hey, sis, I've got one question. Why did you say your name was Francesca? I wanted something fancy. Francine was too plain. Now it's my turn to ask one. When are you gonna admit that you're in love with Ray? I spat out my juice. I'm what now? You heard me. And he's always looking at you like an infatuated cow. I am not. And that doesn't even make any sense. I'm as thin as a toothpick. Oh, jeez. Just shut up, admit it already, and work it out, losers. And with that, she pushed us into the pool and ran <laughs> off cackling. Maybe it wasn't going to be so fun to have a sister after all. <laughs>